بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته It was a couple of days ago, um, a couple of classes ago, I was asked a question by a student, a disciple or a disciplet. What are the seven most important books in your library? Or the seven most crucial books in your library? And we said that that is a very difficult question. It's not an easy question. All books are of some type of importance. And many, many, many books are all important and crucial and vital and so on and so forth. Let alone the fact that the spontaneous question, different fields, fiqh, hadith, tafsir, etc. Let alone the fact that we have a mixed audience. We have a mixed audience. Like most lectures, not all but most or classes is a mixture. What you find people listening that aren't students of knowledge. They're just listening because they want to get the they want to be in the dhikr of Allah. And you find some people who may be listening because they just like hadith disciple. That's a reality. They just uh, they like hadith disciple. Or you find some people who may be listening, they're in the middle. They know a little bit, they've studied a little bit, but they're not totally, you know, real hardcore like that. And you might find some people who may be hardcore. Some people who only speak Arabic, who learn and study books. Some people memorize the Quran and watch hadith disciple. Okay? Some people who you wouldn't think would watch hadith disciple, watch hadith disciple. As we've proven, we were in Canada. All right, and then you find some people may watch Hadith Disciple who are envious and jealous. It's a reality, and we know that you're out there. Alhamdulillah, you're not hidden to us. Alhamdulillah, that's fine as well. And we also welcome you, as we've said before. And we also believe that you have a right on, over us as what, as those other others do. And there are other people with different theories and different thoughts. And different levels of cups being full, being empty, being half empty, half full, etc. All types of people watching. So these are all reasons why that question was a very difficult question. So Bidin and Tyler, tonight I'm going to share a few books with you. Which I wish I would have mentioned the other day. Uh, which I consider to be from the most important books in my library. That I've studied and read and uh, went, took from, so on and so forth. Tayyib. And I think it's a crucially important book. For someone who's learning hadith and the sciences of hadith and those who are trying to learn the sciences of hadith in the right way in the proper way in the right direction from the beginning so here's a book which we will call it says Al-Ilal Al-Saghir Al-Ilal Al-Saghir and the author of this book Al-Ilal Al-Saghir it says Lil-Imam Abi Isa At-Tirmidhi Al-Nuskhati Abid Fat Al-Kharruhi uh, this is called Al-Ilal Al-Saghir by Imam Al-Tirmidhi, the, the well-known Imam of the Jami', one of the authors of the six books of Hadith. And it's clearly mentioned that he died in the year 279. Uh, and it says that this book is from a manuscript, which is of Al-Kharruhi, 548 he died. It's an original, authentic manuscript that the edited version is based off of. It says here, Tawfiq Adil ibn Abd al-Shakur al-Zuraqi. That's the editor. Adil ibn Abdul Shakur al is the editor. He, he made the tahqiq of the nuskha. And the taqdeem, the introduction, taqdeem fadir to Sheikh al-Muhaddith, Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahman al-Sa'd. Sheikh Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahman al-Sa'd, he did the introduction to the book. Dar al-Muhaddith is the one who, or the company, who printed the book, published the book, etc. Tayyip. Uh, the book is well known. The book can be found in the end of Jami or Tirmidhi. In the end of Jami Tirmidhi. Pass me the last volume, please. Volume 5, right there, the book that's open. There are no coincidences. We know that everything is the Qadr of Allah. But if you want to say linguistically coincidence that I was had this book on the table open and had nothing to do with me introducing these books. So this here is the last volume of Jami or Tirmidhi. This is one of my favorite prints of the book. It's not necessarily the most authentic print of the book. There are tahqiqat which are better, which we do have, whether it's behind us or in storage or in other places and locations. But this is one of my personal favorite versions of the book, okay, for several reasons. In the back of the book, we know that the last chapter, 
of Tirmidhi, it says here is Al Manaqib, the virtues, the virtues of the Sahaba, virtues of the companions, etc. And then after that, he says Kitabul Ilal, the book of Al Ilal, Kitabul Ilal. And this book here is not a separate book that Tirmidhi wrote. And before I move forward, as I said before, we have a mixed crowd and a mixed audience. And my speech right now is addressed to hardcore students of hadith. Right now. We're addressing them specifically. So if you feel lost or it's a little out of place or you're confused, that's fine. But everything is not for what? Everybody. And we generally give everyone a piece and a share. Right now we're talking to a specific audience. And those who don't know everything or can't get everything, inshallah, you can benefit from it. One way or another. Tayyip. So in the end of a Tirmidhi's book, he has Kitab al ilal and that which is called or is known to the ulama as uh, al ilal al sagir Tayyip. The book is called what? al ilal al sagir All right. The small miniature version of al ilal And we also know that Tirmidhi rahimah Allah ta'ala has another book which is called al ilal al kibir And the original version of that book is not found. Rather we have the tartib of uh, uh, Abu Talib al Qadi. All right. Tartib al ilal al kibir Then what he asked Imam al Bukhari about hadiths. So Imam al Tirmidhi rahimahullah on the back of his book, he wrote a chapter on what he called al ilal. And it's not just about al ilal, but it's about ilm al hadith as a whole. Al mustalah, al rijal, al jarhu tadil, ilm al rijal, okay, speaking about the narrators, etc. So this book here is really a part of Jamit al Tirmidhi. It's not a specific book. But what this editor did, he extracted it from a manuscript that was more authentic and made it into a specific work. But al ilal al-Saghir is actually a part of Jami' al-Tirmidhi, as we've just shown you. Tayyip. So, as a student of hadith, learning hadith in the proper and correct way, in my humble opinion, is a must-have book. Obviously, Jami' al-Tirmidhi as a whole is a must-have and a must-read a must have and a must read. And Alhamdulillah, I take pride. I take pride in the fact that Allah Azza wa has allowed us to do classes from the book and to call to the book and praise the book for some years now. And I don't think there's no one like that in the West at all. I don't know. I'm saying what I think. I don't think there's no one that's been pumping and promoting the book like we have been. And saying that it is the most well-rounded, pound for pound, best book from Kutub al-Sitta. Tirmidhi's book. So it's a must read for Talib al and it's also a good read for an everyday Muslim. طيب. So, Alil al sagir this edited version here. And you can see right here. Um, these are some of the manuscripts or some of the pages of the manuscripts from the book. Alright. Along with the Tirmidhi, this is definitely put on your list as one of the most important books in my library regarding Ilm al-Hadith. Now, the book of Tirmidhi, rahimahullah, was explained. Many ulama, they explained his book. Just like they explained the other books. There's explanation of Sahih Bukhari, explanation of Sahih Muslim, explanation of the Muwatta of Malik, explanation of Sunan Abi Dawood, etc. And from the ulama who explained a Tirmidhi's book was Ibn Rajab, Rahimahullah, Ibn Rajab al Hanbali. Uh, but unfortunately, and Allah Azza wa Jal, he has the ultimate wisdom, his book did not survive. It was destroyed, it was lost, it was burnt, it was stolen. It was thrown into the sea by the Mongols or the Tartars. al muhim the whole book did not survive to 2019. There's a small piece of the book that has survived. A small piece of the book that has survived. But the whole book is totally lost. Except for the last part of the book. Al-Ilal. And subhanAllah, how amazing is Allah, Azza, how perfect He is. That He allowed for that part of the book to remain in whole and to survive to this day. So that book... Uh, with the explanation of Ibn Rajab is commonly referred to as Sharhu Ilal al Tirmidhi. Sharhu Ilal al Tirmidhi. And Sharh Ilal al Tirmidhi is not the name of the book. Rather, the name of the book is Sharh Tirmidhi or Jami Tirmidhi. Because Ibn Rajab explained the what? Entire book. But the only piece that has survived in whole is that one specific part which was made into a separate book. So Ibn Rajab Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He made the explanation of this chapter, just like he made the explanation of the rest of the book. But the only part of the book that survived was this last chapter. So the common day people, ulama, researchers, they refer to this part of the book that has survived as a separate book. And they call it Sharhu Ilal al-Tirmidhi. As a student of Hadith, 
This is one of the most important, one of the most impactful, and was one of the most influential books, and one of the most sound books of learning the true way of Ilm al Hadith, of the true way of Ilm al Hadith of the earlier scholars, the earlier scholars of Hadith, and also shedding light upon the way of the later scholars. But found, laying down the foundation of the earlier ulama of hadith with regards to learning this great science. So this book has several different versions and several different tahqiqat, several different ways of it being edited and annotated. One of them, one of the earliest versions, is uh, by a great uh, Iraqi scholar, Sheikh Samarai rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, he died and he was one of the first people to make the uh, tahqiq of the book. Unfortunately, that version of the book is not here in this library. It's in another location. Uh, I have two other versions here which are more modern. The first is by Dr. Hamam Ibn Abdurrahim Said. And as you can see, it's in two volumes. It's one print of the book. Uh, Maktabat Rushd. And the second one, perhaps is better and Allah knows best, is by uh, Dr. Nurdin Itir. Alright. Uh, and the printer is Darul Ata. Darul Ata. Obviously, this isn't the original cover of the book. Alhamdulillah, the original cover of the book fell off and was faded away, so I got it bound with leather. Oftentimes in Medina, we would do this. You go and you put a leather spine on the book, the way the book is more sturdy. Especially if it's a book that you want to what? Always have and read and go back to it. So these are two versions of the book, and there are other versions, as I said. And these are two of the best versions of the book, of the book being annotated and edited. Shar al al-Tirmidhi is one of the most important books of Hadith. If you've never heard of it, if you haven't read it, Nukhbat al-Fikr or Al-Fiyat al-Siyuti or Al-Fiyat al-Iraqi, this is, huh? one could say, the Holy Grail. Everyone understand this? The, the, the first testament. Everyone understand this? The, the original book. Everyone clear on this or not? And it's one of the most thorough books written on the subject from a later scholar. Ibn Rajab died in the 8th century. So to answer that question and to honor that request of that sister, this is one of or these are some of the most important books in my library regarding the Ilm al-Hadith. Not the most important book, not the only book, but what? One of them. And it's a book in which you have to read, study, memorize, and constantly be in. If you want to be successful on the true way, I said, of Hadith. The true path of learning the sciences of Hadith. According to the way of the earlier ulama of Hadith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. It's a very, very, very long story regarding this book and regarding those books and my journey with those books. Alhamdulillah, very, very, very long story, a long saga. Al-Muhim, get those books if you don't have them. If you can't find the actual copy of the book, then send someone on Hajj or Umrah to bring you back the book or from Egypt or Mauritania or wherever you are, wherever your friends are going. And if you can't, then at least get the PDF. And even though you have the physical copies of the books, have the book on your tablet and on your phone. Or your Maktab al-Shamin or whatever other program that you use. Nah? And it is unexcusable for a disciple of Hadith, who is a serious disciple of Hadith, who knows Arabic, and who is studying the sciences, not to have that book in his library. And not to have read and studied that book and have that book under his or her pillow. And Allah Azza wa knows best.